Today we are doing a rear disc conversion on a 2015 Toyota Tacoma. It's my truck. I've been stashing these parts for a while. It takes quite a bit of parts to actually get it done the right way. Uh, but we're going to flip the camera around, check them out, and get started on the work. Here's a quick rundown on what I feel like I needed to get this done. You can do it with less for sure, but um, we've got rear pads, the parking brake shoe option, the 2010 style 4Runner rear rotors, uh, custom stainless brake lines that go from the adapter plates to the calipers, which are also based off of a 2010 4Runner, some gear oil to top off the diff, because we are changing the rear axle seals. I got uh, the new spacers that the seals ride on that are pressed onto the axle, the washer that goes below these, and you've got a uh, little gasket that goes between the um, lug nut or the wheel stud plate, and this is the gasket that goes between the rotor and the axle itself. Uh, these are the rear wheel bearings and the parking brake shoes. Um, little shields to cover up some of the open exposed parts and last but not least we have full ARP extended studs a couple of brake flare fittings that are going to be going on these stainless lines that we'll be custom making and I've got some steel line that we'll be doing uh, the first prototype lines on um, when you do a disc conversion on this there is a line that goes from the soft lines over to the caliper and in the adapter conversion you have to bend those and make them fit and it looks pretty bad uh, it works but it does not look good so we're going to be making new lines to eliminate that altogether and make it look nice and clean once it's all done and just before I tear it all apart we're talking about these lines right here so the one that goes up the wheel cylinder around to the leaf pack and then this line right here that goes across the axle all the way over to the other wheel cylinder at the top of that. Um, the bending, you have to bend this and it, make it come down about right here. Uh, it's doable. And you know, those, those lines are malleable for sure. They move around. But I wanted to just make a clean line so we don't have to see any of that underneath. And the main thing here is so we have a nice rotor and disc combo behind the wheel instead of a drum. So as you can see, it's a big parts pile, like I said. There's a lot of work to do this. We have to pull the axle completely out of the housing, get it over to the press, pull the bearings off the axle, change out the wheel studs, and then press it all back together, put it back in, uh, change the axle seals first, and that could be tricky. Um, but I did get an extra one just in case I damage it. Uh, I learned my lesson a few weeks ago doing a friend's truck. So it's always good to have spare axle seals on hand, just in case the first one doesn't go in quite as planned. All right, both shoes are off we got a bare axle and shield the only thing to do now is disconnect the brake line we're gonna get a bunch of brake fluid everywhere but nothing you can really do about that and then we'll get ready to uh, unbolt that e-brake cable there's a couple of 10 millimeters on the front of the shield on each side and then you take off these big bolts here and that's gonna let this whole axle pull out and we'll be doing that to both sides um i think i'm gonna do one set at a time I don't really want to do both and have the axle all open all the way through. So we'll just do one side at a time. Once this thing's pulled out, I'll show you the uh, tool that I got. That's kind of like a press jig to get this shield off. So the wheel bearing is right here and it is behind the shield. The shield is in the middle of the axle, the wheel bearing and the hub, which is all one unit. Um, originally I wanted to just do extended studs 
but you can't really do extended studs without taking this all apart. Some guys will drill a hole here to get the stud through, um, but my shoes were already wearing out anyways. They're already on their way out, so this one was pretty much done here. Uh, I had a little bit of life, but you can't squeeze it all out. Either way, um, that's when I started looking into the rear disc conversion. I figured it'd be a better upgrade and um, safer, you know, for driving. Uh, not necessarily for parking, but it's a better dispersing heat dispersing unit than a shoe. Um, but there are benefits to shoes because there's way more surface area actually breaking. Either way, um, this is based off of a 2010 Forerunner. If Toyota put it on their SUVs, it's perfectly safe to go on a truck. And if you've been following up with Tacomas at all, the 24 is now coming with rear disc. So we're not really going off the norm here, um, but I'm just doing it myself rather than having a shop do it. Anyways, let's get on to the work. This C-clip right here was fighting me bad, so I tried to put the fitting on here, press it down more to release, but it just was not budging. So I had to pretty much destroy it to take it off. Uh, but I took these from another build where we put new ones on, and I slid it over and it's fine. Uh, it doesn't snap all the way in, so I think there's something wrong with this bit right here. But if you look, you see this black line? That's where the axle seal rides on and keeps the oil the gear oil in the axle itself that's why um, whenever you do a job like this you get new ones because you don't want a new seal riding on that groove and since we're doing press work uh, I could push this in a different spot so the seal would not be riding in the groove and could leak out of that these are like 15 bucks a piece it's not worth the headache to try to reuse the old ones so always get new ones uh, underneath it there's a washer as well it's kind of flared up like domed um, it's like a crush washer type of deal and you could reuse those but I got new ones I think they're like five bucks each uh, there's just way too much work to kind of cut corners and um, save a couple bucks moving forward after that clip issue we've got the press tool ready to go it comes with a bunch of adapters uh, this one I was already automatically trying to because that's what I used on the forerunner uh, but the bolt pattern on the Forerunner is a little strange. Uh, the one I needed was the circle disc. And what he does is he countersinks an Allen head that goes up through. And that will contact his main press tool. And uh, then you use your factory bolts here. And when you put this on a 20 ton press, it will not work in anything smaller. It pulls it all right off. So we're going to get to it and you'll see for yourself how it works. silver ring and it pulls off the brake shield um, you could cut this shield off if you want to make the job easier but I'm just changing it these wheel bearings are due to be replaced and it's better to do it now than if and when it fails on a road trip and the company same guy that makes all these press tools I reached out to him I asked him what do I need to make it complete so I can service pretty much anything um, so I bought all the other parts that included this piece of here and this, which is a inner race remover. And uh, unfortunately, he's had a bunch of people knock off his stuff with cheap inferior product. He sells on eBay, so he will not sell you this unless you buy that tool. Um, it's good, you know, it makes sense because he put in the hard work to do the initial design compensated for it but either way um, you know you're either going to spend 30 40 minutes on here with the Dremel cutting this off splitting it and getting it out or I've seen some guys like spin the axle while they heat it and it falls off but this just goes right here we're gonna put some screws in bolt it to the press tool take it out in a few seconds
All right, I wanna go over everything so that you understand in your mind a little bit better how all this stuff works. So right here, we're going to have a brand new wheel bearing. The wheel bearing is still on here, but if you look, there's rubber and then there's that silver face right there. When you pull this hub out, the inner race always stays on the axle. It's part of the bearing, but it's pressed in in halves. So you gotta keep that in mind also when you're doing the press work to put it back on, that you support the inner race on the backside. So when you're putting the axle in, it's not splitting. So there's one race of bearings here. There's another race of bearings inside. And this is the inner race. So that goes right there. This is the seal. And that is your wheel bearing sticking out of the brake dust shield for the stock shoes, which we're removing. From there, on the back side, you've got that cone shaped crush washer that faces up. First, you've got the axle seal uh, little race that it slides on, and there's a groove on the top. So the groove goes up. So that goes like that. And then you're going to have that snap ring that I was having an issue with. And that goes on to the axle. So circling back to the axle, this seal on a brand new bearing faces towards the studs and it keeps gunk out of the bearing on the inside. So it keeps this clean inside. Then the bearing gets pressed on all the way down and you've got these little bits that go over. And right here, this goes below that and you put the snap ring on and it keeps everything locked in nice and tight. That way when you're driving, you don't have an axle coming out of your housing. It is held in with that little C-clip. All the load will stay there. Kind of insane, but that's engineering and physics. Way beyond me. Either way, what we have to do now is clean up the surface where the new seal is going to ride on. Uh, knock out these studs because we're going extended stud. Change the gasket between this and the axle press in the new studs and start getting all the bearings ready to get pressed onto the axle. After that, change the axle seal, change the O-ring, put it back in and start messing with that whole disc conversion. But we're getting this done first, one side at a time, and then we'll start on the disc conversion. That way we don't get lost and we, we remember where everything goes. Placement, you would knock these studs out, transfer the shield over to the new bearing, put the studs back in and secure it. You can see they're kind of like wheel studs almost that are uh, grooved so it bites in. But in the instructions for the disc brake kit, we are not using this. We're discarding it completely and we're actually not even using the studs because they're giving you bolts. So from here, we're just pressing the bearing straight onto the axle and we'll put the uh, little cone shaped washer the other um, ring for the seal to ride on, press it all down, get the snap ring in, and uh, jump over to the next one. Okay, the last thing we need to do before we throw this axle back in here is uh, one, you change this O-ring if you need to, it's already cleaned and changed. And then um, we're going to be changing this axle seal. So I got the axle puller, just gonna put it in right here, pop it out. And that's pretty much it. We gotta do a little bit of cleaning. 
for the new one to seat properly. Run a little scotch right on that. Do the other half. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I just bent this line out of the way. This line usually goes right here. Uh, we won't be reusing it, and I didn't want it to keep dripping brake fluid over everything. Um, that's the one we will be changing, but for now, I just bent it out of the way. And we'll get started on the new axle seal. Oil on this guy. I don't have a good history with this. I bent one and had to get a, another one when I did my friend's truck, so we'll see how lucky I get today. It fell into that pan last time, and I don't want to get this one full of junk. Try to get level here. So this thing works amazing up until I get to this lip. Then I have to manually hit it in a little bit more all the way around. And my preferred method is with this extension on a smooth socket. And we'll just tap it all the way around and make sure it doesn't get too deep. You can hit these in too deep. All right, there's a small little groove that curves out this way. And that's pretty much what you want to reveal without going too far in. You can use the old seal and bash it in, but you can't really see what you're doing. And when I did that, it just kinked it straight in. So I didn't want to do that today. And I'm pretty happy with the way this one's looking. Feels nice and even all the way around. And for whatever reason, Toyota doesn't put grease on this lip. So you want to get grease right in here, because that's where it's going to ride. When you put the axle in on that silver seal, or that silver ring and you don't want the first go around to be on dry rubber sometimes you'll get seals that have grease already pre-packed in this little groove which is good it's easier you don't have to worry about it but it's not the end of the world there's a little lip on the inside that's kind of straight you want to grease that and then get the grease on the groove that's ready for the axle. When you put this back in, you do not want to let it touch the seal. And then all the way at the end, almost at the diff, there is a little hole that it needs to go in. And you don't want to knock it into the diff. So just be gentle. Originally, this is going to have the ABS sensor back here in the disc brake conversion It says to face it towards the front so that you make room for the caliper. So we'll be doing that right now And we're just gonna let this sit here Because we still need to do the other side. So this is one side complete for the disc brake kit I'm not gonna bore you with doing it all over again on the other side so from here, we're just gonna jump forward to start getting the disc brake installed after I handle the other side real quick.
was a ton of work, but here we have the rear disc set up on the passenger side. Um, I still need to do the driver's side, but sort of like the axle press work, we're just gonna get that knocked out and then uh, jump into making the lines. That way this video isn't too long. But uh, that parking brake shoe was an absolute nightmare to figure out. Um, just like with anything else with instructions on aftermarket product, they're terrible. So you kind of figure it out along the way. But um, this looks pretty good. It's got the caliper, a stainless line that'll go over to a banjo, or sorry, to a, um, a flare nut. We're all done with the disc brake conversion with the exception of the brake lines. So I set up my light right here and we'll pop off the factory hard line and come up with an idea for an aftermarket one. popped off the vehicle the two inside bends and pretty much I would say like 90% of the line I'm gonna copy but the ends where they meet the new caliper uh, soft line bracket need to be changed I bought two sticks of steel because both of them together were about 12 bucks and those are going to be my uh, test brake lines so I'm gonna make brake lines uh, if I mess up it's not a big deal it's cheap, I bought extra, but this stainless steel line was $13.75 a foot. I got 10 feet, so I'm not messing that up. I'm going to make those after I figure it out with the steel and set up a good game plan for how I want the lines to come out. It's four o'clock right now. I started this at seven and I'm gonna throw in the towel. I'm not doing the brake lines tonight, not the custom lines. I'm just gonna get it wrapped up, get it on the ground, make sure the parking brake works and there's no funny noises or anything uh, using the bent factory lines. It looks terrible, but I just, I need a break. So there'll be part two of this, but we'll finish this video with the wheels and tires on the ground and the brakes bled pretty much like you would do if you weren't doing the custom lines. Either way, uh, we'll get back to it and finish this up. line bent out of the way for the shocks um, basically I modified the ends to meet up with the brackets this one I did a little bend and over there I did a little bend as well it's not the prettiest but it'll get the truck on the ground and we can finish up for today I'm mad enough to admit defeat on those lines I just don't have enough energy or time today to get it knocked out but we can definitely get it done another day I had to take off the center console and adjust or give it some slack in the line. So I loosened it, gave it some slack, and then I set the drums to um, just about grabbing, but not uh, friction like the instructions stated. And now the parking brake is perfect. So I could probably throw the center console on. I shouldn't need any more adjustments but we'll leave it apart for now just in case. And I need to get my sidekick over here to help me bleed the brakes. I did uh, stainless brake lines a while ago and I used ATE type 200.4. It's got a higher boiling point than .3. So we will top this off with some ATE and try to bleed the rears. All topped off. I'm going to uh, crack open the bleeders and see what comes out. I don't have my significant other here to help me with the bleeding, so 
I'll have to do as best as I can myself until she gets here. So Toyotas with a electronic booster uh, are bled by holding the brake halfway down for about 30 seconds with the truck on. I don't have a bleeder here, so I'm using a GoPro stick. And we're gonna run over here. See if we got some fluid coming out. There we go. I closed it, I'm going to open it again. Close it. Open it one more time. And that should be a good bleed without an assistant. But I will need her for the front. We'll top off the fluid just a bit. Don't want to go too much, at least not yet. GoPro stick is still holding the brake. Key is on the on position. See all the air coming out of that? So we'll close it. Open it. Close it. Let's see if we can get a better look at when it falls in. This will be the third. There we go. Do one more just to be safe. I saw a little bit of air in that one. I like that. That's good. I did a quick check on the banjo bolts and all of the uh, flare uh, fittings for the brake lines. Everything's good, nice and dry. Should be ready to throw the wheels on, get it down on the ground, and get it out from blocking my driveway. But it's probably five, six o'clock right now. I started this at seven, totally kicked my butt. I didn't even finish everything I wanna do, but the disc brake conversion is done, and I can't wait to see how these wheels look with the extended studs, and um, see how good that custom socket I got made for the extended studs, which I'll have to show you in just a sec. Since we did the axle seals and leaked a little bit of fluid, instead of topping it off, I'm gonna change it. So right now it's draining, and while that is draining, we'll take these lugs off that I put to hold the rotor during the install and get the wheels and tires on. so there's these two lines right here on the hub that I like to line up as the best as I can with the logo and then uh, we've got hub centric rings on the axle and it looks like you just popped off hub centric rings on the axle to keep the wheel centered try that one more time and then I put my wheel locks with the logo and I do two locks so one on each side in the same spot every time and then the rest are just lugs uh, if you've watched any of my videos before this has a race on it so it doesn't mar up the wheel when you torque them down which is one of my favorite features on them so I'll just put these on I just snug everything up and then everything gets torqued after that If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this before. This is a extended socket and this is the wheel lock key. I had to get the core drilled out in the middle and then TIG weld both of them so that I can put my wheel locks on because the original way they had the wheel lock key with no center wouldn't allow it to go all the way through on the new lugs. Ah. 
perfect. Now we'll jump over and do the other side. The hub centric ring is already on the axle. Luckily, this one has two little hub deals that line up perfectly. And we'll just start all these by hand. And we got the brake bleeder here. I've been waiting all day, so now we can get the front bled and uh, get this thing driving on the road. Well, thanks for watching. If you uh, made it this far, I appreciate it. Uh, I just need to do a little bit of fine tuning on the parking brake cables, and I'm gonna clean up the garage and get everything inside. We've got a big video coming for the FJ40 in a couple of weeks, and I'm working on the LT250R video as well, part four of that. Anyways, thanks for watching, appreciate you guys. Like and subscribe.